Okay, so um, kind of a, I'm, I'm the guy that has to follow Dr. McCann, so uh, <laughs> pressure's on me. But um, so quick intro, my name's Han Sang Bay. I work for Citi, uh, formerly known as Citi Group. And um, I, I have a couple different roles at Citi. Um, I own some of the network management t tools that we have, faults, alerting, uh, capacity management. Um, I also have another role where I have a team of people that troubleshoot application and network issues. So over the course of the year, I always cherry pick these interesting problems that we see on the network and, uh, and, I, say, and I squirrel them away for a presentation at SharkFest. Now this is another case of, do I have more network problems? Again, it's packet loss. It was on a very high profile platform, right? Kind of the platform that if things go wrong, people scramble because millions of dollars, um, tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of million dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars go past this network. So clearly, when we have an issue, it's all hands on deck. And this is one of those cases. So packet loss. Let's open up the packet trace and take a look. All right, so what do I do first here? Let me get rid of this IP identification field for now. What do we type? What do we see? Retransmissions, are they real? Probably, because I see more than one, right? By the way, there was, um, if you see massive amounts of retransmissions or massive amounts of packet loss or out of sequence or dupl duplicate acknowledgement, and I'm talking massive, basically every other packet, right? Then suspect the capturing methodology because very few applications work when every other packet is getting lost. So more than likely, it was you captured it at two different points, merged it, and you're seeing the packet twice. How do you prove that? You look at IPID field. If it's got the same source destination and IP ID, it's the same packet, two different parts of the network, okay? And if you look at the TTL, which I'll show you an example of, you can even figure out how far apart that capture point must have been because you can use the TTL field to, for that, all right? So what's different about this screen from the previous one? Bidirectional. Bi so our number one clue is, oh, wait a minute, I don't have a one-way packet loss, right? I'm seeing a two-way conversation and I see my source and destination changing. What else, what else do I see here? So let's go down the list. Let's open up the TCP and look at the sequence number, 2904, 2904, 2904. But what else is happening? The length is growing again. The length is growing again. So is that a problem? Well, no. We just learned that's fine. My buffer is growing. I didn't, I didn't get an acknowledgement. I'm going to just give you more. Okay, up to the maximum, 20, 2904. So how do we troubleshoot this? Well, we know where the problem occurred, right about here, right? So let's clear this out and let's look at um, tcp.seq equal equal 2904, okay? So this is when I sent 2904, sequence number 2904, I sent 53, bytes worth of data, then what happened? So let me clear the. So this is the beginning of our problem, okay? And what do we see? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Describe what we see on the screen. Just kind of think this through. Got 300 milliseconds before the retransmission, okay? What else? I'm sorry? Acknowledgement is one. What does that mean? Other guy hasn't sent you any data yet. It's a one-way conversation, which is fine, right? It's like an FTP. Okay. So this is perfect, right? So when does TCP resend data? How do you know to resend the data? I, I heard a timeouts. What kind of timeouts? 
So there's every time TCP does something, timers go off, right? And this is something that's never exposed, and you learn over time different systems have different values. So TCP can't wait forever for an acknowledgement. Right? So after a certain time, it, it assumes, you know what? The packet got lost going the other way. But how come the other guy didn't tell me he lost the packet? He never got it. But how does he know he should be expecting that packet? He doesn't. Right? Especially, another clue here is the acknowledgement number is one. Meaning, the other guy, the other side, the 192 guy, he doesn't have anything to send you. So in this case, he's just listening for you to send stuff. And when you send stuff, I'll reply back with an acknowledgement. I don't have anything to say to you, so I'm not going to start sending you packets. Okay? And I'm not going to trigger any alarms because for all I know, you're sitting there thinking with somebody hovering over a mouse click to say, send. Right? I can't differentiate a problem just because there's nothing coming in. But I know from a sender side, a timer went off and I decided to retransmit. Retransmit again, retransmit again, retransmit again, retransmit again. Okay? And then what happens? So let's look at packet number 58. This is the first time that we're seeing a packet coming in from the other side. And what's his acknowledgement number? 2904 which means from a 192.168 perspective, he's good up to and including what? 2904. I'm good up to that point. So everything after 2904, that 10 address sent, he hasn't seen anything yet. What else is different about this packet? Let me scroll up here. And this packet. Size. So the first thing that you notice is the size is different. Okay? And what does it say? I'm sorry? There's some data in the packet. Now the other guy is sending me packets. So this is an important clue. Keep in mind what the problem that we're describing. 10 dot is sending traffic to 192. Is it getting there? No. We know for a fact it's not getting there because our retransmission timeouts are occurring and I keep sending and sending and sending I never hear anything back. All of a sudden, 192.168.1.1 sends me an acknowledgement up to and including 2904 and he also sent me some data. So what does that prove? I'm sorry? You're not losing acts coming from the other side. Technically true, but beyond that, what else do we know? I'm sending you packets, and you have no clue I sent them to you. Because all you've told me, the 192 guy, is I'm good up to 2904. I haven't heard a single thing from you since 2904. May or may not be a problem, I don't know. But between packet number 48 and 57, or 58, the 192 said, you're not sending me stuff, may or may not be a problem, I don't really care, but I have something to send to you and I'm going to send it to you. Because notice packet length of 11. So what does that prove, definitively prove, that this is a, what kind of packet loss? One-way packet loss. Packets that I'm sending from 10 dots perspective are not making it to the other side, but 192.168 is able to get through to me. So as network engineers, what should that trigger? Routing. Routing. Natting. But why, why, why are we throwing these terms out? Not just to throw them out, but what's the end game? Why, why does routing come into play? Why should you suspect something is going on with routing? Asynchronous path. Every enterprise network has a asynchronous path, meaning it's redundant. And it's the only field where we use the, you know, redundant to be, it's not redundant like we don't need it redundant. It's redundant <laughs> like it's duplicate. And it's a good thing. We have redundant paths. We have more than one path. So what's, what's it telling me? That 
when I go this way, I get blocked. If the other side sent it to me this way, it may or may not have gotten blocked. I don't know. But I do know that this path is good. Right? So you can actually tell, I actually have a Visio tool that maps out Ceph path from a Cisco standpoint, tells me exactly where my next hops are. So when we run it, we notice that when we go out this way, I'm going through the left side, but the return path is coming through the right side. And I only have a few boxes that are in that path that are redundant. So immediately I was able to say, it was either this box or this box. But because I'm capturing from farther down the stream, I can't positively tell you which one it is. But I do know it's the left side of the equation that's bad. So what did we do? We took a troubleshooting that might have taken a long time. By looking at the packet trace, we know that for fact, it's one-way packet loss. And it's the left side of the path that's having a problem. So when we got onto that box, sure enough, we had a soft failure. It was a redundant uh, engine, and it didn't quite fail over. And so it didn't alarm because it was a soft failure. Right? The biggest problem to solve in routing and switching is soft failures. When things break hard, redundancy kicks in beautifully. Everything reroutes, life is good. When something gets stuck and, it, and, it, and it's lost its mind and it can't even tell you that it's broken, that's when things start to get black holed and troubleshooting becomes difficult. But this packet trace was taken near the server, the sender, yet we were able to coax the information out of here that most people may not be able to figure out, right? So you can say, oh yeah, it's packet loss, it's retransmissions, etc. But by looking at different parts of the, the trace, you can start to develop a picture of what may be going on. All right? Any questions so far? I'm sorry? This is uh, one of our subsidiaries. Yeah. Um, so it, well, he's with the, our operations team, so he's familiar with this. But uh, it's it's a, a it's a subdivision that we have um, that does trading. So obviously, it's high profile. Yes. When you showed us the analysis flags, I thought there was packet loss in both directions. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. Actually, let's not take a look at that right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my uh, the most hated words that I saw as students. It can be easily shown that um, I left, left as an exercise for the reader. Um, so we'll, we'll get back to that when we have time and we can swing back around, okay? All right, I'm not, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, you know, we have a couple other examples that get progressively more difficult. So I just wanna make sure we have time. Any questions on this besides the, uh, the 192 guy? No, okay.